I have spent the past 12 hours and 22 minutes trying to figure out what exactly it was that Danny Ainge just did. Looking at it from all angles, trying to find the light in the darkness. After these past 18 or so hours of thinking, I have come to one solid conclusion. I have absolutely no idea what it is that Danny Ainge is thinking. Hey man, don't worry about it, SDC. I got you, because I'm gonna come in clutch and explain why exactly both sides make this trade. So, what's up YouTube? It's the one and only Legend of Winning, AKA Low, and I'm back with another video. So, if you have been living underneath a rock and you don't know what's going on, because Twitter has been going crazy over the past 24 hours, the Philadelphia 76ers and the Boston Celtics came to some agreement to have an arrangement by Monday to make a trade between the two franchises. The Boston Celtics are gonna give up this year's number one pick to the Philadelphia 76ers. And in return, the Philadelphia 76ers are gonna give up this year's third pick, along with possibly a 2018 pick from the Los Angeles Lakers, if it falls within the second, third, fourth, or fifth pick. However, if it doesn't fall within one of those four picks, then they will convey the 2019 Sacramento Kings first round pick to the Boston Celtics. Now, why exactly did both teams do this? Because I know that's what the big question is, what a lot of people are asking over the past couple of hours. And I'm not gonna lie to you all, I sat back and I thought about it, and it somewhat makes sense to me. And let me break it down from what I've gathered on both ends. So first, talking about the Philadelphia 76ers, why exactly would they give up assets just to move up two spots on the draft this year? Two reasons. One, they want and they need Markel Fultz. Markel Fultz looks like he's gonna be one of the better players in this year's draft, which is saying a lot because this draft potentially could go eight to 10 prospects deep with quality players. So if you are saying that Markel Fultz is one of the better guards in this draft and one of the better players, then that means that Markel Fultz more than likely will be a franchise player for any team that picks them. And when it comes to the Boston Celtics, they really don't need a franchise player that's a guard because obviously they already have Isaiah Thomas and they're gonna have to deal with his contract in another year or so. So if you are the Boston Celtics, why not just trade down for a team that has the assets to give you more draft picks and you're still gonna be able to get a top three draft pick in a very quality draft class this year. However, I know a lot of people are gonna ask, well, what about Darren Fox? Because Darren Fox seems like he's a quality guard as well. Why give up assets to get another guard, even though there are plenty of guards in the draft along with Malik Monk and so on and so forth. Now, let me be extremely clear on what I'm about to say. And this is not a diss by any means necessary, but Darren Fox might be a bust. <laughs> I'm just gonna be honest with you all. Shout out to Kevin O'Connor, cause I've seen this video on Twitter on a couple of people pages. Uh, Kevin O'Connor, I don't know how he got this video, but I'm gonna put it on my channel. Hopefully I don't get a strike. But this video has been surfacing around on De'Aaron Fox workout with the Philadelphia 76ers, and it's not too good of a look for De'Aaron Fox. The reason for this is because one of the biggest struggles with Fox is the fact that he has a bit of a trouble behind the three-point line. And in today's NBA, that's not something that you want to have on your scouting report. So De'Aaron Fox right here, he is shooting from behind the three-point line. And as you clearly can see, it's uncontested three-pointers, catch and shoot, rhythm jumpers, shots that you should be making way more consistently than De'Aaron Fox is making. And he end up shooting five for 12 from behind the arc. Again, on uncontested three-point shooters that are catch and shoot, it's not like it's off the dribble. It's not like anybody's closing him out. Five for 12 isn't that good at all. So because this becomes a bigger problem with Fox, it's obvious you don't wanna have a team with Ben Simmons who also struggles from behind the arc or at least seems like he will. You don't wanna have two perimeter players who are gonna struggle from three. So go ahead and go get Markel Fultz because that's an obvious upgrade. Furthermore, even though Josh Jackson seems like he's gonna be a fairly solid player as well, you really don't want Josh Jackson on your team either if you're the Philadelphia 76ers, simply because you already have Joel Embiid, Dario Saric, and Ben Simmons. Your front court is already full. You obviously need a guard. So that's the reason why the 76ers went up. Another thing I wanna point out with the Philadelphia 76ers, it seems like they want something that's much more guaranteed. 
waiting another year or two at this point doesn't really make any sense because they feel like they already have the pieces on their team especially with ben simmons which is something that is a positive if you're a philadelphia 76ers fan and also this more likely means that they're willing to move forward without Joel Embiid, and they're willing to move assets to get a guaranteed player in Markel Fultz because Joel Embiid at this point obviously was drafted three years ago. For those who are unaware, this upcoming season is his last year on his contract, so they're going to have to give him a contract or at least sit down with him and talk about giving him a contract in the near future. So if you're a fan of Philly, two things that you want to realize when you're trusting this process. One, Markel Fultz does seem like he's going to be the future and De'Aaron Fox definitely wasn't going to fit on the team. And two, there's a big possibility that Joel B might not be around for too much longer. Not trying to ship him off just yet. However, it's very clear that they are willing to move future assets to get something much more promising and guaranteed. But let's go on to the Boston Celtics because I know that's what people want to hear. So if you're the Boston Celtics, you did this trade simply because you knew you were going to get Josh Jackson. Josh Jackson, from what I've read and what I've gathered, he is more likely the best prospect in this draft class. However, again, like I said before, Philadelphia really didn't have a role for him on their roster because they already had a front court that was pretty full. And the Lakers, similar to the Philadelphia 76ers with Brandon Ingram and Julius Randle, don't really have that much space for him either. However, I have heard multiple sources saying that the Lakers are willing to draft Josh Jackson. So you always got to keep that in mind as well. However, when it comes to Josh Jackson, because a lot of people are assuming that he was going to slide down to the third pick, possibly even the fourth, then there is a big possibility if you are the Boston Celtics, if you were just going to get him anyway, why not just slide down, get another asset if you're going to select Josh Jackson, regardless because he fits in with the system. It's not like the Boston Celtics need a point guard. They obviously need much more help on the perimeter, especially if they're going to let Avery Bradley walk during next offseason. So that's what you want if you are a Boston Celtics fan. On the other hand, there's obviously this trade talk of the Boston Celtics moving some pieces. And if multiple teams around the NBA feel like Josh Jackson is their answer, again, if you're able to slide down while also getting another future asset, then why not just do that if you're still going to be able to select Josh Jackson? So, for example, if you are the Chicago Bulls, now you can trade away Jimmy Butler and get Josh Jackson, next year's Brooklyn Nets pick, and potentially even next year's Los Angeles Lakers pick if it falls within the second or fifth pick. However, that really doesn't make that much sense either. This is what I've been hearing for the past couple of hours that they're going to trade for Jimmy Butler. But to me, why not just keep trying to go for Gordon Hayward? Now, obviously, you can kind of cover your back and make sure if you don't get Gordon Hayward, you still have the flexibility and the option to go get Jimmy Butler. However, if you get Gordon Hayward, then what would be the purpose of keeping Josh Jackson? Because Josh Jackson is a small forward, similar to Gordon Hayward, similar to Jalen Brown, who you just drafted last year as well. So this is where the Anthony Davis talk starts to kick in because I've been saying this for the last month and a half, maybe even longer than that. So my thoughts on this is, if you're the Pelicans, it's not completely clear on what's happening in your near future. DeMarcus Cousins isn't guaranteed because you don't even know if he fits in with Anthony Davis. Then you still have to get a starting guard because Drew Holiday is a free agent. And unless you're going to overpay for him, who knows what type of replacement you're going to find with Drew Holiday. You don't have any young players because you traded away your 2014, 2015, 2016, and 2017 first round draft pick. So you don't have any young players that you're going to be able to sign under the salary for a really good price. Or you can rebuild your franchise. You can give up Anthony Davis, get Josh Jackson. If you're going to keep DeMarcus Cousins, who knows if DeMarcus Cousins is good enough to propel this team into the playoffs. More than likely he won't because he never did it in Sacramento. So that more than likely means next year you'll have a lottery pick. So this year you get the third pick, which is Josh Jackson. Then you'll get next year's Brooklyn pick, which more than likely will be a top three, more than likely be number one, let's be honest, but a top three pick, possibly even the Lakers pick, which will be a top five pick. And if it's not, then the Sacramento Kings pick in 2019. And you'll get your pick next year as well, which more than likely I feel like will be a top 10 pick. So there's a possibility if they make this trade 
with Anthony Davis going to the Boston Celtics. And in return, the Pelicans will probably have to take on a massive contract, which might have to be Al Horford. But I think you all understand what I'm saying. So to me, it just makes sense for the Pelicans to trade away Anthony Davis, get a whole bunch of young assets. You still have DeMarcus Cousins. It's not like you don't have a quality player on the team. It's not like you don't have a top 10 player. You can give DeMarcus Cousins a max contract once he becomes a free agent towards the end of the season. So even if you want to keep a top 10 player in the NBA, you still have DeMarcus Cousins. So it's not like you don't have talent. So in my opinion, that's what the Pelicans should do. They'll have a top 10 player in DeMarcus Cousins, another solid veteran in Al Horford, and three, potentially four draft picks within the next two years. That just makes the most sense to me. But at the end of the day, the Celtics, I feel like they're just opening up more opportunities for themselves. Please tell me what you think about this in the comment section below. The Boston Celtics might be able to build a super team, and it does seem like there's going to be a very quality young core with the Philadelphia 76ers, even if Drew B doesn't pan out. Because even if he doesn't pan out, Ben Simmons, Markel Fultz, Dario Saric, definitely quality pieces there. And um, I hope I answered all people's questions because I've seen a lot of people, a lot of concerns <laughs> over the past couple of hours, especially Celtics fans, man. Celtics fans on Twitter were hilarious last night. But with all that being said, people, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you follow me on Twitter because I will be uploading much more videos. If I'm not mistaken, I'm going to try to squeeze this in for the second video of the day. Also, I'm going to try to catch the Hoop Talk podcast as well, so you can catch me on that also. And um, I'll see y'all later. Peace.